It is so wonderful to feel good again and to be able to get back in touch and share some quilting with you. Oh my goodness, it's been a long couple weeks and I've missed doing this so much. As quilters, we so enjoy engaging with our quilts and sharing and, and just talking ideas and and what what drives us to quilt and what our inspiration is. And when we're able to connect with another quilter, it's just it's it's very inspiring and it's rejuvenating and I know when I'm wandering through a quilt store I never hesitate to talk to somebody else who's in there because I know they're the same kind of individual that I am somebody who's looking for something fun to make and some beautiful fabric and whatever the case and it's always fun to share ideas and that's why I'm here and that's why I am so excited you're here to join me thank you so much and thank you for being patient these couple weeks while I've not been able to uh, to do any videos I've been sick but I'm feeling so much better and you can tell behind me that I've been working on the converging corners it's not as big as I had hoped it would be but I did get the the basic layout of it finished so you can see what this quilt is going to be I'm Leah Louise from inspired quilting by Leah Louise and this is really exciting for me. This quilt is just so much fun. I love these quilt blocks. And I showed you in the last video how to make them. And this video is about adding those little narrow strips. Do you see those pink strips that are, are weaving through? Not even weaving. They are cutting straight through. But they add such a fantastic accent and a dynamic um, addition to the design because it's just bringing it all together. It outlines the blocks, yet it also really enhances the color. And I was really, really anxious about getting the right color, and I think this is a win. So I want to show you how to do this today, and I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step on how this works. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you a, uh, a full photo of what the quilt looks like. But thank you again. It's wonderful to have you here. While I was gone, we, we hit 10,000 subscribers, and I say we because it's, it's all of us together. And that's just so awesome, so great. And I just want to thank you all for being being there. And here we go. Let's go ahead and do some converging corners. I think you're going to enjoy this. As you recall, I mentioned I couldn't finish the quilt without one more piece of fabric, and that was the accent fabric. And I I had a piece that I wanted, and I wasn't sure of the name, the color name. So I went online and I ordered three of something that I thought could work. And these two are the the same print just different colors and because this is darker you see the pattern more and this is more what I was looking for and then I thought if I couldn't find something like that then go for something completely different and I just really liked this it wasn't really what I can use in this quilt because I wanted more of a solid that would really um, create a contrast and stand out more where because this has um, a lot of pattern in it. I was afraid it might blend in too much. So here's the fabric I wanted to match. And would you look at that? I got exactly the same one, just what I needed. So that was perfect. So I was thrilled that I could, you know, finish the quilt with the fabric that I wanted. Now let me show you just how wonderful this turned out. Um, I'll get a big picture for you, but this is this is where I wanted to go with it. This is what I wanted to do is create this narrow strip between these blocks. It just brings out such an incredible pop of color. Um, there's a lot of pinks and and uh, little pink accents throughout the quilt and the fabrics, and you know bits of purple and you know look at down here we have some K facet and tulip pink colors and I just think this worked out so wonderfully I'm very very excited about it now I will tell you it's only nine blocks I've been sick for two weeks and I haven't been able to do much sewing but I wanted to get these strips in here to show you 
how well they work and I will make the quilt bigger and when I get to the point that I do when I'm quilting it I'll put the, put another video so you can see this but you see in between um, these strips don't meet they they crisscross where the converging corners converge where they come together but where we have just the um, the background side of the corners those remain um, somewhat open now I stretch these out pretty long because I really like I said I really like the look of it and I like the color that it brings in so um, I, I have my fabric my strips ready to go and once that's all set then this quilt's going to be finished but in the meantime I love where it where it is and how it's going so what I want to show you today is the the previous video we made the blocks and and showed you how all that went together um, today I'm going to show you how to do these strips not that it's difficult but we're doing like a lattice a sashing here and it's very narrow this finishes my goal initially was to do it a quarter inch. I ended up going with about three eighths, only because for me that was a little bit easier to work with than the the um, the quarter inch. Simply with the seam allowance, it gave me just a little more room to work with. And so, when you're dealing with strips that narrow, and you have long stretches of that piece, you want to be able to keep it consistent and I want to show you um, the way I do that in order to keep everything nice and even so that you have a a strip that is consistent so it really is a second aspect that draws attention to it not just the color but that 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 contrasting size it really helps make it stand out and becomes a a primary design element and I love it I just I'm so happy with this so let me go ahead and show you how to make this and I have some full-size shots of the quilt um, that I'll show you at the end so I'm really excited to get started I'm so excited to be back and sharing quilting with you thanks so much for hanging in there and and being here today to watch so let's get started we're going to add our narrow strip that is sort of like the sashing between our blocks and each piece is cut three quarters of an inch wide and actually I went with just seven eighths um, just to give me a little fudge factor and when you press and roll these seams over you lose a few threads so that gives me just a little bit more to work with and what I'm going to do is line my trim my lattice along the edge and I'm going to place this seam somewhere here because the lattice is going to come all the way from one edge to just beyond the last um, log that we put on our log cabin block so I'm going to place this and I'm just going to kind of you know eyeball it there's no right or wrong and I'll put it right about there and I'll come back to the top and I'm going to sew one quarter inch and you want to make sure you know as we do in any kind of narrow sewing of, of narrow strips is we need to watch both sides so you see how this can easily twist over see how this is going and it narrows narrows and then it's off but we can see fabric over here see what I'm saying right there it's not a lot but when it's a small piece it's really going to show up so you want to make sure that you keep this lined up here and that you're lining this up with your quarter inch seam allowance and will it be perfectly exact absolutely not is it going to be terribly noticeable no because what we're doing is making it visually um, what I want to say so that it visually works and you know I want to bring this over just a little bit because I'm I don't want to get far off 
and we'll just bring it over and then I'm right here so I'm going to follow that same line I'm going to line this up so that as I'm sewing it everything's going to be nice and straight and I'll just sew off a little bit and I do trim it with just a little extra there in case I have to go back and and uh, make any adjustments and then I'll come do the same over here so with that I'm going to press this and we are going to have a half inch piece so you can see that we took our one quarter inch seam all the way through and that leaves us with just a little bit more than that half inch and again that's going to allow me the extra room for pressing so let me go ahead and um, get this pressed real quick and we're going to add the next piece on I'll show you how this works this has been pressed nice so we're ready there I'm going to bring my next block that's in line and I'm going to line it up now I always want to sew on the narrowest piece if I'm doing a narrow trim I want to make sure that's what's facing me in order to um, keep it straight so that I don't have to worry about any you know any swinging back and forth or you know the fabric moving or shifting and so I'm going to place this whoops I've got some thread back here where I basted it and I'm just lining things up at both ends and I've pressed that to go up and then this will go that way everything looks terrific no seams on the back to worry about and so I will just press the or excuse me lay this right there and I'm going to do my quarter inch and notice that my quarter inch there's a couple ways you can do it the the first ones I was doing I had this laid over but this is bulky and and it doesn't stay put so even though it's pressed I just hold it back with my fingers and I'm watching this right here um, this is going to be where I want my seam allowance for this to be a quarter inch um, lattice strip and then I'm also watching over here to make sure that I'm staying within my quarter inch on that side so it's a bit of a balance and you just want to kind of stay in between those two points that will help you to um, stay aligned where you need to be if you get off on on one piece or the other you're going to catch it much quicker and yes I did have to take out a piece or two on my first round on the first couple blocks I did now see how this blues wanting to come out I'm going to pull it from underneath and then reset this on top sometimes um, those fabrics can tend to want to bow a little bit and it just depends on how they were sewn maybe there was you know too much tension on one side causing it to bow all right let me go ahead and I'm going to tuck this down here make sure everything's where it needs to be get my seam allowance lined up on both sides all right I'm going to take this pin out because I know that's where I want to end up and I'm lining this here I'm holding this open and again see how I remain constant there and there so we're going to get a pretty darn good seam trim just a bit of that off and so you can see um, now these do end up being just a bit more than the the, the quarter inch um, and that's because I cut it an eighth inch bigger and let's actually get the ruler and see let's see so a quarter inch is right here so it's more like about let's see if this is so we've got two eights three eights and four eights so it's it's more like about three eights but that's okay it can be whatever you have as long as it's consistent throughout the quilt and and that's the number that I started with because it worked for me and there's no pattern there's no rule this is something that um, I saw whoops excuse me I knocked the camera this is something that I saw um, online and I thought oh how fun this would be and I looked for patterns I even tried to contact the folks 
who um, created the quilt and never got a response. So I thought, well, we're going to wing it, and this is what I've come up with. So now I am going to go ahead and press this one, um, and then we're going to add one more strip across down here because this is going to be um, basically a nine patch, three by by three blocks. Um, just having been sick, that was all I could muster to uh, get finished. So this quilt will become bigger, but for now this is where we are and this is um, at least an option to show you how to finish it and then we'll go from there. So let me press this and I'm going to get another strip ready for down here and we're going to get quilting. We'll put this piece together and you're going to love how it looks. With the seams pressed, you can see how nice this looks. We've got a nice consistent strip here and these two are lined up well and and that's really great. That's that's where we want to head with this. So now I'm going to add the third block down here. I've already attached the um, strip to it. I'm just going to go ahead and flip it over and we'll sew it onto this one. And we'll sew it from the lattice side up. Let me go ahead and get this straightened out so we are good to go. And I want to first line up the outside edges. So I'm going to put this here. So I'm going to line it up this way and this way. I'm just going to put a quick pin while I do the other side so when I go to start everything's ready where it needs to be. So there's that one and we'll come over here. It'll be easier this way. And I'm going to line this with the block below because I, I left a little extra hangover there just in case of, of an emergency. You never know what's going to happen. And so I'll pin this right here so when I get close to the end I know where I need to be. And this seam is going this way, the direction I'm sewing, so I don't have to worry. And when you have a narrow piece, it, it tends to kind of want to curl under, which is why I've, I sort of reset as I go. Now you can pin the whole thing if that, you know, pin or clip it, um, if that works better for you. And I'm okay just sort of doing it along the way um, and getting it figured out. Okay. So you can see I had to make an adjustment. I kind of sewed off the edge there. Not sure. I wasn't paying attention. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to have the same amount between this stitching line and my presser foot and the same distance on my throat plate where I can line this up. And my fabric's lined up. This is all perfect, just where we need it to be. And I'll go a couple few inches at a time, depending on, you know, how agreeable the fabric is. And if something's turning or twirling in a certain manner and needs more attention, then that will, you know, slow me down. But this seems to be going very well. This one's nice and easy. And again, just watch as we keep that straight. Oh, am I running out of bobbin? Oh, no, I don't think so. Thought I heard a funny noise there. Okay, so I'm here to the end. Lift this up, make sure I'm where I need to be. Actually, I got a little bit off, I think. Let's take a look. Yep, see what happened? See this one kind of slipped out on me. Now this part I'm not worried about, but where it actually gets thick here, I do worry. So I'm going to pull this out because I just, I don't want them to be crooked. And if you've ever put lattice on before and without cornerstones, cornerstones are a godsend because they line us up in the corner so that as we're adding these extra you know, strips or sashings or depending on what you're doing and what you're calling them. Um, it can be very easy to have your corners of your blocks not line up exactly. And you go to hold your quilt up and, and everything's sort of shifted. What, did I not cut that? Everything's sort of shifted and you go, what on earth is that? My blocks are all nice and square. Well, sometimes the um, way you're you're holding your fabric or the way the presser foot is pulling the fabric, the feed dog is moving the fabric, all those things come into play 
and things can shift and move. So you do need to be a bit uh, wary as you're going along as to just what's happening. So I'm going to realign myself right there and I'll come back about an inch. I'll sew to the inside, then meet where I was sewing. And let's see, I want to make sure, yep, that measures there. This is going to go here. Much better. Okay. That's going to work great. Well, I'm glad I had a chance to show you that because that's just, you know, one of the little things you need to look for. So now, when I look here, I've got a nice seam. When I open this out, I've got a nice even seam. See there, see where I was going off? And now it's just nice and straight. So let me go ahead and press this one. And we're going to add this to a long strip that will then become the sashing between another row of blocks. So give me a moment and we'll get on top of that one too. In order to add our next strip, we need to sew the lattice and piece it where we want the um, colors to break. So what we're doing is we want to leave white space so this doesn't completely um, break up the quilt with a continuous lattice. We just want it in between as an accent to our our, conver our uh, what are we calling, converging corners. And so what I've done is I started at this end. I needed a long piece of the pink and what I'm using is 18 inches wide. So I cut this and then I used an extra piece that was left over from another and I just put it together. And then I added a little bit of white down here. So I'm pinning it this direction so I know where I need to go. And actually, let me put one more pin in the middle here so I make sure I space everything well. And I'll just put that right here. That also reminds me that these seam allowances are going up, um, which is against the direction that I'm going to be sewing. So I'll need to keep an eye on that. Now, then what I'll do is I determine how far I want the pink to come up here. And I did that here as well so that my pink strip will come to about here when it's all sewn. So I'm going to put these two together. So you can see I piece this lattice strip sort of as I go because it's, you know, it, it's not a meticulous measurement that it has to be, you know, 18 and 3 quarter inches or something like that. You're, you're sort of eyeballing it and you just want to lay it out and see what you know what's appealing to you and so let me just trim this off make sure I, whoa i'm just knocking everything over excuse me trim all these bits off and now this is ready oh now don't do this um <laughs> sew it on the on the wrong side okay if i weren't so close to that edge i would just cut this off and turn it over and sew it but I don't want it to be quite that that close so I'm just going to trim out these little bits here um, of thread and just pull this okay now let's do it the correct way and put it this way so let me just lay it down to make sure I have it appropriately planned so this goes down this way this is going to go face down as well so we're going to go this way to this way and pull out these extra threads I will take the seam just a little bit wider I don't always like going over the same sewing holes generally um, my concern with that is if the needle goes through the same line of, of stitching holes repeatedly, it's not going to fall in the same hole. It, it's going to fall in between. And I just feel that that weakens the fabric. And I don't want to take a chance of that being a place that can potentially tear. So now this one's going to go, whoops, didn't get all my threads out. This one's going to, um, the seam allowance is going to go towards the darker side trim all this off. I kind of made a mess of things here. 
And I, let, I put a pin here so I knew this strip comes this far, the other comes this way. So I knew I wanted this to be a bit longer. So I'm going to put that right here and line that up. Give myself plenty of room to work with. And then I'm just going to pull this up to the top and we'll start sewing. So again, we're going to use the same the same method of lining on the edge and making sure that this seam allowance on the uh, the inside is even as well. So there we go and I'm going to start back here just a little bit and making sure I'm on my pink fabric. Actually you know what? I'm going to start over on that because I think this may have been over too much. So this is the first sewing I have done in like two weeks. Can you tell? But that's okay. I know that you all are very patient and uh, been there before yourself. So I just, I just wanted to get this done because we've been sitting on it for so long and I'm just really excited to see this. So over the next week or two, I plan on making some more blocks so this quilt will get larger. I love it. I just think it looks so wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to line this up here. And I'm going to come back here. Let's see. What am I measuring here? Okay, there we go. I'm thinking I'm doing the second side and I'm going, wait, there's no seam over here. But I will make sure that this pink fabric lines up right along that consistent width from that, that strip of fabric there. So I want to take it this way. And that way we'll have nice, even lattice strips and with something like this that's as geometric as it is with those strips um, it really will matter if you get too far off or if you get them wavy because it's going to be visible everything is is straight and you know when you you bring your your strips up let me try and grab a piece here and you put them side by side you want them to be you know pretty close um, they may be off, just like this is off, like I don't know, a thread or two. That you're not going to see. But if there's a significant shift in the size, it will be visible. And you decide just how important that is to you. Okay, these seams are going to come down. And that one goes up. Okay. So we just crossed over the first lattice. Now we're into the, the middle, the second block. And all right, so I have a good amount there. So this is going to be easy to line up. I've got plenty on this side. So I'm just going to sew through. I'll get down to this pin, then we'll go across. All right, now see how this one is going to line up right on that edge. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in there and put it right on the edge, just like that. Keeping my seam allowance on this side where it needs to be. Now since this piece is going to press up, I'm going to press this one up too just for consistency. It kind of helps keep things nice and easy when I'm pressing. There we go. There. All right. All right. So I'm just going to loosen this piece up. Lay it right where I need it to be. And put that here. And there we go. So what we have is a nice <laughs> piece full of threads, I'm afraid. 
Look at that. I didn't do a good job trimming. All right, well, we'll get some of the rest of that out. But so this, you see how this strip is pretty consistent in size. And see, that seam right there, it's not going to be noticeable. So we've got this all the way through. And we have this space here. Now when we line up the other ones, this is where we have to line up. So that's, that's the next step. So I am going to just cut this tail off. I don't like leaving tails on because it's too easy for them to flip under and get sewn. And then I have to tear out something, something more. Um, and I don't want to have to fuss with that. All right, so ordinarily I would press this, but at this point I think we're good. We can just finger press and I'll give it a good press once we're finished. What we are going to do right now is attach this piece that we previously did with all three blocks with our center um, lined in there. So I'm going to line this up and let me show you how this is going to work. Let me get this laid out so we can line it up. With our narrow lattice strip attached to three blocks, I'm going to bring my next section of three blocks. Um, this is the one we previously did and we added this and again every once in a while you know just sort of check and make sure um, that one we did pretty darn good but what we're going to do now is line this narrow pink strip up with this one we want them to line right here these are the two points that are going to be the most important the outer edges we can trim if need be but these need to be lined up otherwise your when your quilt is open you know you kind of have this this wonky um, I don't know offset that just doesn't look very very attractive so I'm going to just put this here and I'm going to line these two up here all the way and bring it up to this outer edge and then I'm going to double check it one more time and see it did slide a bit I want to bring it over this way this is actually a little smaller on this side so I'm going to kind of tuck it in there and we'll bring that in like that now I'm going to pin it right here so I can go in and take a look and I'm going to turn this piece up and look at that it fits right in there so while it's off a little bit it's centered and that's going to be okay um, you know there are things that we fuss about and there are things that you know we, we we can certainly live with and those are your choices and so what I'm sharing with you are my choices okay now I just kinda wanna bring this down to the edge make sure everything lines up well and this is going to need to line up here so we'll kind of fold it back and it lines up pretty good bring it in so if I put that right there I'll put it right on the edge and you can kind of feel it not unlike when you're nesting a seam oops I went too far there we go let's go this way and this way and let me put a pin in there and see how close we are let's fold it open this way there we go yeah we're good so I'm going to put another pin right here to hold it down at that point and with both pins in I'm going to come back up here make sure that works good now I'm going to be sewing from the trim side and I can see where this this see where this didn't get trimmed even so this is a little bit wider and we can take care of that on the other side and then I've got plenty of room here okay so we are ready to start let me turn this over because we're going to be sewing on the narrowest strip that way we can keep an eye on our seam allowance so this lines up really well here and that lines up there so I'm just going to go ahead and get this started and 
So again, this is my, my constant that I want to keep even on all the, all the seams because that's the width of my narrow strip. And now I'm going to just make sure that this lines up here. Bring my strip in so that it lays next to the strip underneath it and doesn't extend too far one way or the other. And let's see, we'll go right past this little seam and then we'll get ourselves set for the next section, just like this. Now since this was pinned over, I'm just going to leave that pin in place. And so I can still follow the, the seam line from here. I just want to make sure that stays put because that's kind of the point where everything lines up. All right, so let me get my next round happening here. So I am going to open this up as I go through here. I'm looking at this seam allowance. See how that got a little narrow when I was going by that? I may have to go back and touch that up. And actually, you know, I'm going to do that now because I know that's going to be an issue. And it's not much, but see how I, I wavered out and then came back in? And that's just because it was a pin there. And it's, you know, it's our nature to sort of avoid obstacles. Here we go. And I'll show you. See, it wasn't much, but that little bit, um, when both fabrics are opened up, is going to make a difference. When you're dealing with small strips like this, um, you know, it's it's a bit on the fussier side. It's worth it. It's worth it because it looks wonderful. And let's see where we are here. This is where not everything lined up quite as evenly. So sometimes if I reach underneath and pull the block to get it to lay flat where I want it. Okay, so this lines up here. So it looks like what I did is didn't quite cut this piece at the three quarters. I may have cut it a little shy, but again, I'm keeping this seam allowance and this seam allowance consistent. So regardless of what I did in between, this is going to all work. Okay, so let me put another pin in here. I put this pin on the underside going in the other direction and that's going to be hard for me to sew. So I'm going to tuck this here. And actually I'm going to put, I'll take this second pin out and just put it right back in without moving anything. And hopefully that's going to work out just fine. Okay, now I do have to be careful again so I don't do the funny business where I take a wide angle around that edge. Okay, here we go. One more. And now we're going to take and lay this on top here. Open this out. I think we're going to make it. I do love this color pink. And, and it's such a great accent for a lot of the colors that are in here. Um, and that's kind of what sold me on it. it. It wasn't intentional from the beginning. Oh my, look at that. Oh dear. So, see here's our our quarter inch or so right down here, right? See, I took that wide and I really took this wide down here. So we need to go back and adjust. Um, I just want to look and see how this lined up here. So let's take a look at that real quick. Oh, I've got more pins over here. My goodness, I've got pins everywhere. All right, let's take a look at this one. And I hope you don't mind me showing you the, the glitches along the way, but it, it is going to make it easier. Okay. Remember I said you don't want to do this 
Well, it happened. And this was the pin that I took out that I, I didn't want to. So I am going to take the stitches out. Oh, and the other thing here, look, see how this one went narrow to wide? Oh my goodness, I'm just making every mistake possible here. Here I wanted to show you what a great job I could do. Um, but it also shows you sometimes these things are fussy and it takes a little more time and attention. And, and I'm going to use the excuse that I'm also recording and I have a stuffy head. Are you buying that? Well, that's okay. Let me go ahead and um, rip this out so I can get this back where I need it to be. I completely forgot about you all. I got this ripped out and I started uh, sewing it. I realigned it and um, I'll at least catch you up on the on the back end here. So you can see where this got really narrow. Um, and now that I'm getting this lined up where it needs to be, everything's going to look much better. Okay, so that was about an eight inch redo. So let's go ahead and open this up. Well, you know, it's still off a little bit, <clears throat> but this line mostly works and this carries it over. These are far enough apart. When this is quilted, we're not going to see it. So I'm not going to worry about that part right there. Um, these are pretty all even widths, which is wonderful. And this one worked out pretty well. I just kind of like the way it's all coming together. Let me show you on the other side. Because I did this strip over here. And see, even this one, um, it's off a little bit. But again, white on white, it's it's not going to be incredibly noticeable um, because you're quilting over it. You know, these line up, these are the ones that are important because these are directly against each other. And that's going to be visible if they don't line up. So there we are. So there's just two spots on each of these because this is a nine patch. We're just, you know, joining three blocks together each way. So let me go ahead and press this and uh, I'll show you how this looks finished up. The last thing we need to do is put a strip around the entire edge. I'm not going to do that on this one at this time because it is going to get bigger and I don't want to have to rip all that out um, because it is such a narrow seam that'll pretty near destroy that fabric. So let me go ahead and um, finish this up, press it, and I'll show you how it looks. Here's the nine block version of the converging corners. And I love it. It's going to be so pretty. I can't wait. I want to make it at least 12, if not 20 blocks. And once I get that finished, then um, I'll do a video of how I quilt it. And I think that'll be a fun way to share the final. But I had to put that little pink border on digitally because that's that's kind of how the quilt will finish and and have that pink edge around the entire perimeter. I think that just adds so much. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was a lot of fun for you and gave you some wonderful ideas. This is a great block to make. It's a fantastic stash buster. Oh my goodness, look at how many fabrics are in there. And then, you know, you find that common fabric that you really like, that color that works and, and enhances everything. And you put those between your blocks and what a spectacular quilt. I love it. Thanks so much for joining me. It's been a a pleasure. I'm glad you're here with me today. It's wonderful to be back. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love for you to join my channel. I look forward to seeing you again. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and have fun quilting.